uh, hi friends uh, in this video i'm going to talk about uh, uh, in search of uh, uh, multi baggers so i've been coming across a lot of uh, posts in uh, twitter where uh, people talk about finding uh, multi bagger stocks and making high returns uh, in stock markets by stock picking and uh, so i'm just created a couple of slides to just to break a few myths based on my uh, own experience as well as uh, uh, some piece of advice shared by my mentors uh, so who were in uh, stock markets uh, for quite some time right for almost like 3 3 decades and uh, so one thing i see in almost uh, in almost all the market cycle is that uh, when most people uh, search for the next big thing that's when the market actually tops out right 2001 like where the it bubble burst like where infosys uh, and many other it companies say they just went uh, bust and presumably like 2008 was like when uh, the real estate companies were the next big thing and uh, like they went bust so like all of this again uh, made me to realize that uh, so let's break some uh, myths like what are the what are multi baggers and like how to sort of again find them like that's why i'm going to plan to make a series of videos that uh, helps us to sort of again understand this in a broad more detail so now uh, before we start like i just want to give a couple of disclaimers so like i'm not a stock market advisor and uh, so presumably any stock that's discussed in this uh, uh, video like you should take with a grain of salt and uh, consult your financial advisor before you sort of again make any decision right so that's the most important premise and uh, nothing is free right like uh, there is no free lunch and like i or may or may not have vested interest so do your own research before you sort of again build your own conviction uh, and uh, it's your risk and like your money like which you're going to sort of again use so let's get started so like uh, so some of the things that uh, comes to my mind is uh, like or like few companies like which sort of again caught me attention right uh, like mrf again uh, like shortly called as madras rubber factory right uh, so like where again i know one of my friends uh, grandfather like he sort of again invested in the stock for uh, 100 rupees uh, some 35 40 years ago like where again today like if you see like this uh, stock is hovering somewhere around close to uh, 67300 rupees like which is like massive right Uh, in terms of uh, the amount of uh, wealth creation that it have uh, sort of did for them and uh, and also like hdfc bank right like where again uh, like 300x approx in the last uh, 20 25 years uh, it's like a huge journey right so like one common element uh, that uh, like most of these companies that they sort of again have is like uh, uh, they they are working on a product that uh, most of the customers want and also like uh, like they had some common elements right in terms of like what went behind in terms of uh, building a great company right and in this video i'm going to just uh, show you like some of the key elements uh, which i felt uh, is most important thing right so i remember like one company that i sort of again uh, uh, choose a bit early was again like gilet right like this was when i was a, a graduate student at iit gandhinagar like where the stock was trading almost close to like 2000 2500 trade right? and like it sort of went to like 5500 and 600 in a matter of like 2 3 years like where again almost uh, growing at a cagar of like more than 25 to 30% so i do believe that like uh, uh, like stock market is more about uh, like understanding a business in detail so we are again uh, like we may not be able to understand everything but uh, we can build a sort of circle of competence to understand a few things very well which increases our odds of success right so that's the most important part right so with that premise so some elements i sort of found important was again uh, almost any company right if you see like uh, the survivors uh, in nifty or maybe like in the broader indian stock market right so almost uh, any company that are sustainable and uh, that are survived right they have a very strong management so for every one successful company that we speak uh, there are uh, hundreds of other uh, companies that have gone bust 
right so there is an element of survivorship bias like where again we tend to know the successful companies but not the failure ones right uh, but what makes uh, what differentiates uh, the successful one from the not so successful ones uh, have something common right even a bad investment can also even a bad company can also be a good investment like which we'll again cover separately right uh, and in this in this video like i'm going to restrict on few basic elements and uh, like sort of again uh, explore more deeper in the subsequent uh, parts in this finding the multi bagger series like where almost all the companies right hdfc bank tcs nestle uh, unilever uh, tvs bajaj uh, hero like almost all of these companies they have excellent business no doubt about that and they have a very strong management right who are good at what they do and also like uh, they tend to understand uh, what the customer wants and able to like uh, uh, execute it really well so that's one key important part and also like again uh, most of these companies like when they were started like they were available at a very low valuation so if you go back to 1994 1995 like almost uh, uh, most of these companies they were available at a very cheap valuation like like 10 times trailing earnings or even less than that right and they were cash flow positive from day one uh, which sort of again helped and also like uh, all these companies they had a very strong corporate governance right like they were run by ethical promoters and like they focused on uh, creating wealth for minority shareholders so in today's terms uh, like i can't think of any companies right with more than 5500 odd companies that are uh, listed in the stock markets like almost very few companies uh they are uh, minority shareholder focused which sort of again uh uh very different right and it's hard to find companies or promoters like who focus on uh, the minority interest which is sort of again a key differentiator for all of them and they had high sustainable growth unlike cyclical companies where uh, like they do good for a few years and again they go in a down cycle where they report losses so these companies were consistent uh Uh, growth like they were profitable and uh, they tend to have strong pricing power right so they have built a strong business model where again they command pricing power and uh, even if they rise prices by like a few percentages uh, the customer doesn't churn right so which is sort of again quite interesting right and almost all of them have a free positive cash flow like almost like uh, any businesses right so if you sort of again i can show you an example uh like which is what the model that i made for uh, tcs right so like if you see like in 2013 like they made almost close to 60000 crores in revenue and uh, if you fast forward to uh, 2022 like it's almost uh, more than 3x right and almost like they have stable operating margins like 29% to 30% like where again uh, it's sort of again a proven model and even the net margin is almost close to 20% so which is almost like close to say 40000 crores cash right every year which is sort of free cash flow which is huge in general and the other part is like uh, almost like uh, they have paid out total dividends of close to like uh, 120000 crore which is like huge in general and almost like all their customers they pay within less than 60 days and which is like quite common among all it companies like based on the contracts they have for them so if you see like almost the stock went from being a 20 times p multiple to sort of again 35 right and uh, like from 4 lakh crore market cap like it sort of again went to uh, 13 lakh crore market cap company so which is sort also like sort of again a uh, very interesting Thing, like for a company at this scale like they have sort of again created wealth and like now one interesting thing about uh, tcs is that they are doing a lot of buyback uh, where they are buying back shares and the number of shares available is sort of again coming down uh, which increases the earnings per share right and the profits that's available to each shareholder like it sort of again gets higher right with each buybacks and it's sort of again exciting right so almost they have, they have free cash flows and like they they have uh, made a 2.5 lakh crore uh, cash flow from operations uh, which is almost same like in terms of uh, the net profits right so 2 lakh 60000 right so almost what it indicates is that uh, so whatever profits they make the company is able to convert that into cash uh, which can be like uh, used for uh, growing the business paying as dividends or maybe like acquire another complementary company Uh, which will help them with the inorganic growth right when having a synergy 
between TCS and that company, right? So that's the most important part. So where again with this war chest, now uh, like they can sort of again uh, make any sort of decision, uh, which is super interesting. Like in terms of uh, uh, having such high cash flows helps the group group companies to sort of again take strategic decisions in terms of again uh, scaling it even further. And uh, coming back to this point, like uh, almost like they have a free growing market share, right? Uh, so keeping the growth rates, almost all these uh, these companies they have like grow more than uh, the economic growth, right? So like ten percent, fifteen percent, like consistently like compounding, uh, which sort of again helps them to increase the earnings per share also, right? Uh, where again uh, the stocks they get wider interest from institutions and automatically the value expands, right? So almost if you see any of these charts, like almost it seems like. Uh, like for almost 10 years, they haven't done nothing, uh, but the growth has happened in the last 10 years, like exponential growth, right? Uh, which is the beauty of uh, the multi bagger So where again, uh, like it takes almost uh, 10 years to build a great business, right? So I remember a quote from uh, which was said by Bill Gates. So most people underestimate uh, what they can do in 10 years, uh, but overestimate uh, what they can do in one year. Uh, the same applies to stock market as well. So again, identif- building a great business uh, takes time. Uh, so it's important to, again, uh, the first step to identify uh, uh, multi-bagger is sort of to understand uh, uh, like what problem the business is trying to solve, right? And what kind of problem they are after. And also like, again, whether they are run by a uh, harness promoter or maybe like, uh, like someone who doesn't have a skin in the game, right? Uh, so, which is evident in their uh, shareholding pattern, right? Almost the best companies they have skin in the game, like where promoters hold a majority of stake. And uh, like that's almost more like their baby, like which they are not going to give up, right? And they have uh, uh, low debt and uh, they grow their business through internal cash, which helps them to uh, reinvest and like compound, right? Uh, those are the elements uh, which are again most common, right? To summarize, like uh, they have very strong management and like they have uh, uh, like strong operating margins like customers love their product and also like they have uh, a positive free cash flows uh, which helps them to like survive economic downturns and also to reinvest to scale their business rate and uh, most importantly they are available at fair valuation right so even if this company bought at a high valuation might not yield any return right so all of this companies that you're seeing on screen, they were available at low valuation at uh, one point of time. But today, like uh, post a few years, uh, like now they have uh, sort of been trading at a premium valuation, right? So that is the most important part to sort of again understand uh, uh, from this uh, whole outlook. Uh, So now keeping this aside, uh, so our aim is to sort of again identify companies uh, that are again uh, solving a very interesting problem and also like uh, run by uh, ethical promoters, right? Uh, end of the day, if the promoter turns out to be a fraud or unethical, so whatever they the numbers reported uh, may not be unreliable. So it's important to sort of again identify like uh, uh, like who are the champions or hockeys who are sort of again running the show and understand that in detail. Uh, to sort of again understand like what like what their motivations are and also like the skin in the game uh, which will help us to like deep dive into the financial metrics and uh, the size of the market the company is after which will help us to uh, narrow down even further to identify a few opportunities that can turn out to be uh, multi-baggers uh, in the years to come right? So that's the core message that I have for this video. So in the next video, again, we will deep dive into uh, specific companies uh, by looking them into rear mirrors, like what uh, with the triggers that uh, help them to become uh, multi vendors And we'll see calibrating that. So where again, we will be able to uh, understand in terms of like how to find the next big opportunity uh, that's in front of us. So hope you find this video helpful. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and include in your comments uh, like what was the multi bagger stock that you picked and how did you uh, find that so that it benefits the whole audience. Thank you so much.